The South Carolina Hall of Fame was founded in Myrtle Beach in 1973 to recognize and honor contemporary and past citizens who have made outstanding contributions to South Carolina's heritage, history, and progress. Charles Coatsworth Pinckney was born on February 14, 1745, in Charleston, South Carolina, and was the son of indigo entrepreneur Eliza Lucas Pinckney. The Pinckney family uh, were, were a very prominent family in, in South Carolina. They were you know, rice planters and merchants and, and, and attorneys and, and, and members of the South Carolina and federal government. At age eight, he traveled abroad to England and was educated at Westminster School and Oxford. Pursuing a career as a lawyer, he attended Middle Temple from 1764 till 1769. Despite living and studying in England, Pinckney still considered his home to be the city of Charleston. Upon his return to South Carolina, he married Sally Middleton, and his well-established connections to the colony's leading families were strengthened. He returned in the early 1770s, uh, quickly became involved in the revolutionary movement uh, in South Carolina. And it's in 17, spring of 1780 that the British really make a, a very big push in the South. It's really when they get very serious of, of, about uh, trying to retake the Southern colonies. Uh, Charles Coatsworth Pinckney was the Colonel of First South Carolina. Uh, his uh, post was at Fort Moultrie. When the British attacked Charleston in May of 1780, known as the Siege of Charleston, he urged the American commander, Benjamin Lincoln, to not give up the city. Colonel Pinckney is going to come over from Fort Moultrie, and he's furious. He cannot believe that Lincoln is going to give up the city. Ultimately, Lincoln does, under this pressure, the civilian pressure and pressure from the South Carolina authorities, does hold the city, but unfortunately it does fall to the British on May 12th of 1780. It's the largest defeat of the American army uh, during the Revolutionary War. Pinckney himself was captured, and like many Continental officers, paroled to sit out the rest of the war in Philadelphia. After the American Revolution, Pinckney's ideology leaned toward a more nationalistic view. A very strong Federalist, very strongly in support of the Constitution and a uh, a, a strong central government in the, in the new United States. Uh, his cousin, Charles Pinckney, however, uh, became a Republican, and those were the uh, gentlemen who uh, followed Thomas Jefferson. And the tensions were so strong that Charles Coatsworth Pinckney disassociated himself, he and his brother Thomas, uh, from their cousin Charles uh, because of his political leanings. He was chosen as a delegate to the Federal Convention in 1787 and was an outspoken supporter of a stronger, centralized government. He signed the Constitution and worked successfully for its ratification in his home state. With the French Revolution in the, in the uh, 1790s, tensions really heated up between France and the, and the fledgling United States. President Adams uh, sent a commission to meet with uh, the uh, French uh, Foreign Minister Talleyrand, uh, and it consisted of John Marshall, Elbridge Gerry, and Charles Coatsworth Pinckney. And when the three arrived in France, uh, there were agents who were known as Agent X, Agent Y, and Agent Z. And Agent X apparently approached them and pretty much put pressure on them uh, for a bribe uh, to the foreign, French foreign minister and for a large loan from the United States uh, to France. Uh, the American delegation was aghast. And in fact, Charles Coatsworth Pinckney is, is alleged to have said, no, no, not a sixpence. In 1800, he was advanced as the Federalist Party's vice presidential candidate. He was the Federalist candidate for president in 1804 and 1808. All three campaigns ended in defeat, along with any further national ambitions. From then on, Pinckney was strictly devoted to South Carolina interests and became very active in his support of education. Charles Coatsworth Pinckney was very much a South Carolinian, very interested in, in, in having South Carolina be able to stand alone being able to create leaders uh, that would not only serve on the state level, but also on the national level. He died on August 16, 1825. In his eulogy, the not a sixpence remark was transfigured into millions for defense, not a cent for tribute, and has become one of the great slogans of American history.